or, or a pick and mix because they want it to be done under a tight timetable. And we're looking uh, at probably submitting final proposals, final proposals, sometime uh, within the first couple of weeks of September. But what we hope to do is actually uh, just deal with those things that they want to devolve the finances for. But that will allow us an opportunity to actually set out other things that we want and we need other things that I believe can make a real difference to our city. Now, I'm not going to um, name all of the things that I personally want, but I've got a list. You know, I think the things around skills and education uh, need to change. We've got to adapt and change that educational system where we stop finding kids square pegs into round holes. We've got to look at vocational training to meet the skills of the demands. And that needs to be across the city. These and companies and industry are saying to us, we haven't got the skills that we require here. Why can I and why should I come here? So we have to accept that. We have to accept that there's a need for more houses to be built. We recognise that our universities uh, need to do better. We can work with them and the higher education institutions to improve our skills. The health and the work that we've done with the Mayor Health Commission and the devolvement of the ability to look and work with adult social care is not something, as I said, that is going to be that panacea, but it is going to help us manage how we actually deliver on that. And it's an exciting opportunity <coughs> excuse me, for us to do that. <coughs> in environmental terms as well, excuse me. In environmental <coughs> terms too, we've got a real opportunity to utilise our river and we've got to make sure that we use that, <coughs> not only just to create energy, but to have it as one of the cleanest rivers in the world. And these are things that we will be imaginatively and creatively putting in to our ask. So what I want to say to the leaders of the other party, and also to businesses within the city region, Please give us any ideas and thoughts you have about what you believe can make a real difference. And I'm more than happy to uh, meet with the leaders of the parties to discuss what my proposals are and to actually listen to them. We can't go slow this process down. We simply can't because we will be lost and left behind. So I'm happy, uh, Lord Mayor, to take some questions. If I have gone just over my time, I don't know if I have. I have. I'll keep going for I'll keep going for another 10 minutes then. No, only kidding, I won't, but if anybody has got any questions around that, and I know we've got debates and motions and amendments, but I think it's important that we get uh, this opportunity and we get it and get it right. Okay, thanks, Mayor Anderson. Uh, on a point of order, my Lord, but I just wondered, in view of what the, law, the Mayor has said, whether it would make sense to bring forward item 11 on the agenda, and then we have one debate uh, around the response to what the Mayor has said, and deal with this as one fact right there, Mayor is agreeing to that. What's the view of the Council? Would they like to... Yes. Yeah. 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 Councillor Anderson. Can we, I think, I think all of us are very grateful for a very candid and a very um, directional um, way of travel for the announcement. And um, I noticed in the text of several emotions and the text of your own statement today, we talk about um, the traditional six authorities uh, listed. And I'm wondering if the mayor has any view or has any formal discussions he feels able to comment. I mean, I do appreciate sometimes it's the case you want to have private discussions first before you go public. Whether he would perceive um, particularly statements about the river and, and the economic transport hubs, whether we will be having any engagement with the likes of West Lancashire and Warrington, which are, in many of us, our views, part of, I know, and I was doing for the National Chemical Case, and report, they were part of our natural employment catchment area and we have 
the links between Warrington and St Helens. So having St Helens in Warrington Mark does seem a bit um, a missed opportunity. And I, I was wondering, without trying to prejudice any discussions, whether we may we give any comments about looking at the broader geographical patch rather than just the six of those um, that have been traditionally associated. Okay, yes, on, on that particular issue, it's clear that um, with the arrangements that are before um, Parliament now, that um, we have to work on the uh, coterminosity of um, arrangements with regard to peace, fire, uh, and so that restrains us in some sense. But what I've been absolutely clear on, and I've asked the question, I've asked that question, uh, and being assured that there will be no restriction if it's an agreement between any border that wants to join and the borders that would say, well, yeah, they can be assimilated into that. So I think what, what I'm saying is that we should really get our deal on the line and then, and then look at how, how we can do that. I don't think government wants to, at this stage, look at the boundary commission, looking at different things, or how we set that. Well, well, for instance, one of them is in uh, Cheshire in regards to the peace and to the fire, and not within our boundaries. So that would create some difficulty in trying to do that. That applies in, 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 in a certain sense to Halton, but we've managed to do that under the combined policy regulation. But it would mean a complete change under the existing one. But that's not to say it couldn't, it shouldn't happen in the future. So that is so bad. <coughs> Councillor Ken, is this a question or are you going to move? I'll, I'll move to the, the motion on uh, item 11 then, Chair. And at the same time, respond to the comments of the mayor. Chair, you've asked a question. You've asked a question. I'm confused now where you're up to. You've asked a question. Councillor, do you want to continue the question? Yeah, you'll have the opportunity to ask a question. Absolutely. Difference. 
And why weren't they devolving powers to a combined authority? Well, as I've just said, the government's view, the government's view, is that they want, if they're devolving and taking powers from ministers and departments, a different form and style of governance. Now, they're not saying, and let me make it clear, they're not saying that we won't give some powers to combined authorities. But what they are saying is that's what you'll get there, and you'll only get there at that level if you do this. Now, the choice is simple for us. Really simple. Do we want to get on the bus? We want to stay at the bus stop. Now, for me, I don't want Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham, Sheffield, Leeds, all of those cities to actually be at an advantage <coughs> compared to us economically and socially. That's not what I became a leader of the group, the Labour group for. I am not shaping what um, the government is and who it is. That's been already done. I've got to shape and deal with the facts and the reality of where we are. In the same way we did with the city deal, the mayor the city deal, it meant doing a deal with the Tory government, who I oppose ideologically and because I think the model is corrupt. But the reality is, the reality is, in this instance, we have very little choice. And that's why people, progressives, are grasping that opportunity. And let me finally say, on your JFK, uh, the cost to me in terms of using that. I, I think you're saying to me that that is uh, because we are saying as a governance that that's what we want. But the reality is, it is the governance of Whitehall that is dictating what we want. So we have, we have to, we have to adapt, adapt and change, or as I said, get left behind. That's the, that's the real choice for everybody in this room. You might like it, and it might be what you want, but the choice is either, you know, take it or leave it. And that's the point. Remember that. We don't have to. The city region and this city region don't have to. The leaders can say no. But the choice is theirs. And, and that means, in my view, abdicating responsibility about getting a better deal for the people that elect them. Are there any more questions? I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to come in at this stage. Give us the uh, Council some advice for you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It strikes me, given that the way in which uh, we've started the narrative to be to stray into items 10 and 11, that it would be easier to do two items together, but for the record, it would be very helpful if we could have the form and the other form of the Thank you, Chief Executive. Councillor Hayes, can I just remind members that in terms of the timing of speeches, that the move of the motion gets five minutes, and has the right of reply five minutes. All other speakers, three minutes, and two minutes, minutes for extensions, if they read by the council. I call on the uh, mayor, Anderson, to move the motion. Well, 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 I, I just formally moved because it's been accepted, so that's fine. I, I've also moved amendments to Councillor Kemp's. Um, I'm going to move that. Well, I just formally moved my amendment. Lord Mayor, can I second the Lord Mayor, can I formally second the motion? Formally moving or speaking? Formally moving and then we'll speak. Can I second the motion and deserve the last speak? Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chair. And uh, I'd like to say how much I too agree with almost everything that the Mayor has said today. So let me just de dis uh, deal with the area of disagreement, deal with it and clear it for the reasons uh, that the Mayor has given us. I do not believe in the Mayor of Waddle for this Council. I do not believe, as to my party, in the Mayor of model for a devolved assembly uh, for a city region. But frankly, I'm accepting the amendment that the Mayor will move today because it doesn't really matter what Richard Kemp or the Liberal Democrats or Joe Anderson or the Labour Party think. As the Mayor has said, there is an offer on the table from the government. And we have to decide whether we're going to accept that offer, to get on with it and get the best out of it, 
or we're going to let the bus go out for us. And as the Mayor has said, time is of the essence. The Chancellor has made it quite clear that if we want to go for Devo Max, we must come up with the proposals in September. So whilst I might like to have a convention and a discussion and involve lots and lots of people in the debate, whilst I would like to hope that the amendment that was uh, moved by the Labour Party in the House of Lords and seconded by uh, one of the Liberal Democrat peers, which was referred to in Councillor Cohen's amendment, would actually be successful. We know it isn't going to be. When the House of Lords amendments are discussed in the House of Commons, they will be removed by a Tory party with a very heavy majority because this is clearly not an issue on which the SNP or Clyde Crumley uh, would dream of voting. So the only question before us is do we want devolution in the way that the Tories are proposing it or don't we? And there's one thing that's infinitely worse in my view than a devolved authority with an elected mayor. It's no devolved authority. If we just look at the figures being talked about in the first phase of the devolution to Manchester, and I haven't done the figures for the second phase, they are going to get power over spending of more than six and a half billion pounds. That's not new money. There will be some small amounts of new money, but it will mean that instead of some Boy Scout in a ministry in London that we don't know about, making decisions which are more important than the mayor and the cabinet of this council behind a veil of secrecy in the ministry, the decision about that six and a half million will be taken clearly, publicly and locally by elected politicians in Manchester. The same proportion would be roughly four and a half billion across the Liverpool city region and let's just suppose that we can spend that money 1% more efficiently. That's the equivalent of £45 million pounds of new money. And if we could only spend it 1% more efficiently, we should all resign. Because the fact is, we know our patch. We might have some disagreements across this chamber. We might have some disagreements with the other councils. But collectively, we know our patch. And I'm confident that local decision making will improve things 3, 4, 5 percent, releasing perhaps the equivalent of £200 million pounds more of effective spend in our community. And I want that. And if Joe then spends it wrongly, I'll come to this chamber and debate it with him. Because there's no point in me doing it now, because most of those key decisions he is having to suffer in the same way that the rest of us are. So to my mind, it's very clear that we need to accept what's on offer. And so the last part of my uh, recommendation, uh, which uh, the Labour Party are accepting and I welcome that, is effectively to do across the region what the Mayor is proposing we do in Liverpool. That every political party ought to be discussing this and getting behind it. Every community group, every business group ought to be coming together in this big push for devolution and decentralisation. We need to take the debate outside this agenda, as happened in Scotland, because this isn't some dry discussion about a form of government. This is a vital discussion about the future of services to our city. And it must, must be a much greater discussion than just us around this chamber and the political and chattering classes. So I'm hoping that we can discuss the format of that, that we will all go out and engage in that debate and that discussion. And if necessary, do it with our political colleagues, perhaps even with our political opponents in the other authorities. Because had I been a member of the combined authority, <coughs> I don't want you to repeat this, but I wouldn't do it too often, but the person who would have been seconding what Joe Anderson said today and has been saying inside that combined authority would actually have been made. 
because Liverpool is at the heart of a vital conurbation. We cannot let small mindedness from any sector, from any quarter, imperil the opportunity for us to take a greater responsibility for the future of our city and our city region than we've had for the last 40 years. So, my Lord I hope that with the amendment moved by the Mayor, which I accept, we will then support it. Can I just say briefly that I won't support the amendments by <coughs> Councillor Cummings or the Green Party, because I think it brings us too much crap into that small ground of disagreement than that big area of agreement. Let's unanimously go forward, out of this council chamber, into our cities, into our communities, and say to the government, we're ready for it, we're up for it, we're going to take these powers, and we're going to provide much better services to the people of Liverpool as a result of having them. My Lord, where I thank you. Lord, Lord Mayor, I, um, I welcome the, those comments. Can I just say on, on the issue of the wider participation of political groups, I had a meeting with the uh, Gates yesterday and I've said that in my view we need to, we need to have a debate across parties, across the region, to actually discuss the future, not only of what we're asking for, but any potential uh, debate and discussion around what we could ask for or should ask for. I think that is crucially important. This isn't just the Labour Party reserve, it's everybody. That's the point and that's the message. So I'm more than happy. I've, I've mentioned that yesterday and we will arrange for that to happen. Obviously, there will be you know, debates and discussions in the role of different political parties, but there should also be an arrangement for everybody, all councillors, all leaders included in that, to have a say. And as I said, I'm more than happy, if you're all happy to meet, to discuss you know, some of the things that I'm talking about, and any issues that you wish to, for us to raise, but that will happen. So I'm happy to accept uh, the motion with the amendment because, as I said, uh, you know, I can't. The only thing that I would say to you in, in regards to uh, the, the, the debate around uh, how um, constitutionally the government look at governance around the country, I, I passionately believe in, in the constitutional convention need to have a serious debate around how that, that works. Um, and I'm not saying that my view on that with the federal system, as long as it doesn't split the UK, is the right way, that's my view. But I think everybody's view should be federal. <coughs> I think Labour's call for the Constitutional Convention is the right thing to do. We do need to have the Mayor's Amendment seconded. Seconded, Lord Mayor. Are there any other speakers? <coughs> um, when this, my Lord Mayor, when this council and when um, Councillor Anderson, as a council at the time, um, first moved uh, the question of having a mayor for the city, um, I think the response of the Liberal Party group, as I always call ourselves the constructive opposition, was to say inherently we don't like the centralisation of power, but the dilemma was it was a risk we couldn't afford not to take. And I think that was true then, and it's actually true today. We, we can't afford to take the opportunity, of not taking the opportunity, to give us more resources and more ability to use the resources that are out there. And therefore, what I'm particularly pleased, I am actually pleased, we've now got the Liberal Democrats um, coming in on that consensus, whether we believe the process for morality um, the majority of them took a different view. And I think that's actually quite a healthy sign. I think it's very healthy if we go out from the region to be able to say this is the view of the city across all the parties, or this is the view of the region across all the political parties, rather than being seen this is the Labour Party and, and people's natural uh, worry that because of the political makeup of the region it would just be a, a Labour done deal. Personally, I think the London model of having uh, a, a mayor with many boroughs, many boroughs of great political diversity, dare I say, as well as other diversities, um, and actually having a PR assembly creates uh, an actual consensus 
and of much better debate. And I certainly say, having seen the Scots uh, referendum, having seen the Scots Assembly, I think it's actually benefited because it changed the nature of politics because it has proportionality and it's created more constructive engagement. Personally, and I think we should do everything possible to be open and encouraging other partners, um, including politically other partners, I think it would be helpful if we had to try and encourage the likes of Warrington, West Lancashire and West Cheshire, who are part of our economic and geographic knowledge. And if we are looking to grow the region as infrastructure, to look at the river basin as, as a growth point, then they are direct partners that we need to engage with. And I hear what the Mayor has said, I say that with great respect, but I think um, particularly it would be very useful for us to open up our lines of communication, maybe under the radar, so people aren't on the defensive, as I said during the last debate about the morality, and we should actually re-look at that issue and see if we can build some consensus that may not have an immediate benefit, but may have a longer term benefit. I welcome the consensus in the Council. I welcome us taking initiative. Um, often, um, strength comes from adversity. We're in adverse times. But it has caused people to maybe uh, compromise, maybe people work together in a way that may not have been the case in the past. And I think we will all benefit from that. Um, you have our best wishes, you will always have a constructive view from Liberal Party group. We may differ sometimes, um, but the greater need for the city, the greater need for the whole population. And I can say this one thing. When employers are looking to open up a business, they don't know whether they don't know whether they want to open about a business in Nelsley, whether to speak to the planning department in Sefton, whether to speak to the planning department in um, the city. Certainly some of the borders are out. Perverse, uh, we can have an opportunity to look at a, a really promoting this part of the northwest, the Merseyside Basin, for a better description of the Greater Liverpool. The name doesn't matter, the opportunity does, and you'll have our support. Chair, may I follow that sequence then now it's been clarified?
7641 against all abstentions, so that becomes the substantive number. Councillor Thank you, Lord Mayor. So, um, it's been a remarkable evening in the council chamber. Um, positivity and agreement seems to have broken out. That's very interesting. Um, so, but, but, I mean, we had two of them, one for each motion. The big role, the uh, committee services of ours, to roll the two, the two together. So, I'll speak briefly to part of it and I'll just be pulling it to another part of it. Um, so, and obviously, I think the agreement is the key thing here in a way, but we will keep our second we'll keep our second devotion in because we do think a second amendment to the um, item 11, we'll keep that in despite the discussions that have taken place because we strongly feel that some of the things that we're raising in our amendment are really important to the process and we really want to keep them as part of the debate. However, with the Mayor's offer to meet with the other council leaders and the general agreement that will happen, that will be a good forum for us to continue that debate. So we look forward to engaging with that. So I'm speaking to our amendment to the Mayor's motion. And as you can see, our amendment keeps the majority of the original motion in place because we more or less agree with the thrust of it. Uh, the Greens have long supported the evolution of power down to the most local level possible. But as a council, we're trying to provide the best services in the city. And at the moment, there is another element to this, and that is the um, funding settlement the city has. Uh, so the Mayor's Amendment, our amendment, called for future cuts to be cancelled, and for the central government to also restore funding to this council. So we can start reinstating the loss and threatened services, and we can have confidence of being able to meet the increased future demand. Um, as it stands, only the Green Party is in making this case for, for opposing austerity. The Liberal Democrats are part of the government who put together the spending plans up to 2017, so they obviously supported them. And the Labour Party also accepted them when they voted for the Chancellor's Charter for Budget Responsibility. Um, I was going to go on to a couple of other things, but seeing as the uh, atmosphere has been a bit better tonight, I'll, I'll, I'll miss some of those. But the point is, the Green Party would have restored 156 million a year to Liverpool Council's budget. And that is exactly what they demand me. Um, I'm not too sure, but it was fully costed. No, it would have been over the course of a, a, a parliament at the, at the very latest. So the point is that the reverse of austerity is what is needed in Liverpool. So that's what all councillors should be calling for. So we wanted to add that into the, into the motion. Councillor Brown, are you going to second this amendment as well as speaking to me? Yes. Second the amendment. Yeah, thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord um, yes, I, I echo a lot of what the, the, the Mayor said earlier. I um, uh, appreciate the, the need to commit um, to um, devolution of decentralisation of power. Uh, which uh, Councillor Curran has pointed out we've been in long in favour of. Um, what we want to see, uh, and I won't spend long on this because there's been a lot of debate about it still longer, is a genuine commitment from the government to devolve powers uh, to the region, uh, in particular on transport and policing, housing and strategic planning. Um, we also want to see uh, possible a regional assembly, uh, similar to the Crazy London Assembly that exists in order that we've got a strong democratic mandate um, for the uh, for the for the very involved assembly here and a referendum to give um, good support to that sort of thing because we realise that uh, this is uh, a very radical constitutional change and it should be supported by the people of the area. Uh, I'm keen to uh, echo what uh, Councillor Radford said in bringing on board other parts of the region like Warrington and West Lancashire. Um, we do have doubts as well, Doubt, doubtful that the, uh, the austerity measures which the government have already shown are uh, key to their policies and principles uh, will continue and that we, we need the, the necessary we have need for the uh, required budget etc and required finance to be able to uh, carry out those effectively. 
Uh, we think that these are the aspects of any deal, and that's why we're looking for the amendments this evening. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to speak against the um, Greens Amendment to item 11 um, and the evolution. And first of all, I think you know, we are in a really good place at the moment on this. And I think there is an emerging consensus um, from residents, from businesses, from political parties, from civil society around the need to get new freedoms and flexibilities, new funding, new powers, so that the recovery can be made in Liverpool. And so that here in Liverpool, we can ensure that the people of this city have the wealth, the opportunity, the jobs that we need in this city. And the devolution agenda can create that. Where I think this amendment is, and I think it is well-intentioned, but I think is ill-founded, is that it doesn't focus on what are those powers, what are the freedoms, what's the funding that we need as part of this negotiation. And it is a negotiation. And you know, the door will close to that negotiation sometime in the future. Don't just take the Mayor's word on that, or the Chair of the Combined Authority, or the Chancellor. Take the word from Centre for Cities, an independent think tank, that says this is a once in a generation opportunity. And we have a window of opportunity, which is maybe weeks, maybe months, to get the best deal for Liverpool. And I think all political parties, all of this city, all of the city region, needs to get behind those negotiations to feed in to what the mayor wants to do and how the mayor's going to negotiate this. And then in a few weeks we come back with an offer from government that's a dialogue, it's based out of those negotiations. And there will be an opportunity for this chamber, for this council, to vote whether to go forward with that, to accept that, or not to accept that. And the other point that I'd make, the final point that I'd make, is that devolution is a process, it's not an event. This is an ongoing process that is going to fundamentally change where we are in the UK and how we see power distributed in the UK. Whatever is agreed in that devolution deal in a few weeks' time will not be the final settlement in five, ten years' time. There's an opportunity there to look around an elected um, assembly for the Liverpool city region. I could support that, um, but what's important right now is that we get those powers, we get those funding, we get the opportunity. Don't leave Liverpool behind, because Manchester's already going forward. Leeds, Sheffield, Birmingham, Newcastle will do this. Don't leave Liverpool behind. We need the evolution and we need it now. One of the uh, features of the Greens, which I think a number of people find attractive, is their utopianism. And I think this is magnificently demonstrated in their amendment to item 10. Um, I think it's magnificently demonstrated. Um, because the difference is not the opposition to austerity, it's the following line. Calls on the government to abandon the failed policy of austerity and commit to restoring funding to local authorities. Now, the Mayor's motion condemns the government's policy in this respect, but does anybody, anybody um, except somebody from the planet Zog believe that George Osborne and David Cameron, just after beating us all in a general election, are going to reverse the policy of austerity and reform funding to local authorities? That is the most uber utopian statement I've ever heard. I mean, I love the spirit of it, you know, rage, rage against the dying of the light, but there's not a lot of realism there. I confess, I confess, I hadn't read the amendment to item 11 before I anticipated the Greens' response, but I got it spot on. Because it seems to me what we're saying here is, we don't want to get on the bus, we don't want to stay on the bus stop. Let's get on our bikes. Right. Now, I'm, I, that's very unfair because it's sort of it's a Norman Tebbit type response. Right. But what is good to know that the old tunes are the best because 
in a party that's supposed to be committed to devolving power, in a motion about devolving power, what's the main substantive point that's made? Let's get rid of some councils in lower tier councils so we can fund some councils at a higher tier council. This, and there's actually two consistent policy positions the Greens bring forward at this council. One is to, to get rid of local councillors and the other is to cut neighbourhood budgets. Okay. Uh, Oh, sorry, bus lanes. I'm sorry. That's your that's your particular baby, uh, Matt, Mr. Mayor. Um, but it would be nice to get consensus. It would be nice to get common sense. And it's still. I'm sorry to, to bore everybody, but it still defies belief that there is only one party in this chamber that is opposed to devolution of power and decentralisation. It's not the Liberals, it's not the Liberal Democrats, it's not the Labour Party, it's the Greens. You couldn't make it up. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's just a genuine question to, to the Greens, really. I'm interested in uh, exactly what uh, policing powers uh, it is as a minimum you want devolved, because I think, as far as I'm aware, certainly on most things, uh, the Chief Constable currently has operational independence across Merseyside, the application of how he or she wants to operate policing within APCO guidelines. I think there are probably some elements around national uh, security, a uh, serious and organised crime agency that I think on balance are probably right uh, to be taken on uh, at least across border and probably a national position. So it just strikes me that if we all accept that there are probably only a limited number of concessions that we are going to get from the government on this. It seems that to be asking them for concessions on something that I think more or less we've probably already got, and we could be spending that time asking for concessions on the really important things, at least one or two of which you at least mentioned in the motion. But I do think it's just an illustration of perhaps of how this hasn't quite been thought through. And I think it's great news that we've actually got people who are clear on the detail, Mayor Anderson, and to his credit, uh, Councillor Kemp and others there, earlier, leading on this for us, because I think we need it. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. I'm actually not clear whether uh, Councillor Crone withdrew uh, his uh, uh, amendments regarding 1910. And it's kind of uh, on that point, it's our clarity. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain this is all put forward in sincerity. And to touch on uh, what, what Councillor Mumby said, do you know what I really hate is gesture politics, wherever you see it. And, and the line about council therefore called on the government to abandon the failed policy of terror and austerity and commit to restoring funding for local authorities is gesture politics. Because almost all of us in this chamber, with the exception of the Liberal Democrats, campaigned on that on May the 7th and we lost. So we are where we are. And do you know what gesture politics leads us to? It leads us to Harriet Harman saying we won't oppose the Conservatives' welfare reforms. And shame on her for saying that. And shame on the abstentions from in Parliament by the Labour side that did it. I understand that. I'm finishing my name. I'm finishing my name. And well done to the 48 Labour MPs who had the guts to vote no. Gesture politics always fails.